Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to my Sewing for Beginners series. In this video, we're going to be discussing the zigzag stitch. So, let's begin by discussing why you might need to do a zigzag stitch. A zigzag stitch is useful for a variety of different reasons. The first one is that you could just use it as embellishment. You could use it when you're quilting, you could use it for a plique, you can really just use it to have some kind of interest in your project. I'll pop a link here to my plique tutorial if you're interested to see how I've used it in a plique. Now, another great thing about the zigzag stitch is that you can use it to help finish the edges of fabric to prevent them from fraying. And this is great if you don't have an overcast stitch or an overlocker or serger. Again, I'll pop a link to my tutorial where I actually show you step by step how to use a specific zigzag stitch to finish the edges of fabric. Finally, the zigzag is fantastic at working with stretch. You'll find that the zigzag stitch is fantastic if you're creating lingerie, it's brilliant in bra making for sewing elastic onto things. And you can also see that the zigzag stitch can be used when you're actually sewing jersey and knits. Let's start by looking at the basic features of a zigzag on your sewing machine, and then I will go through some of these individual zigzag uses that we've spoken about, what they look like, and the settings that I applied to my machine. Before you begin sewing a zigzag stitch, you must make sure that the presser foot that's on your sewing machine is suitable for a zigzag stitch. You need to have a wide opening in the center here, because the needle is going to move from the left to the right. For example, you would not be able to use a presser foot like this with a single hole in the center. If you were to use that, the needle would hit the presser foot and you would damage your needle. Make sure that you're using a presser foot that is suitable for the zigzag. It might be the standard presser foot for your sewing machine or you may need to change it. This depends on the make and model of your machine. Now I've set my machine to do the zigzag and it has already given me a width and length that it believes that I should do. That is a width of three millimeters and a length of 1.5 millimeters. Now your machine might give you a width and length or it might be up to you to decide. As a starting point, perhaps do the same as me. Let's do a width of three and a length of 1.5. On this machine, you don't have the ability to choose the width of the zigzag. I would instead need to choose stitch C, which is my zigzag stitch. And then I have the option on this dial to be able to choose from a small width of stitch C all the way to a bigger width of stitch C. And you can pick any point between B and C, which is going to give you a different width. Closer towards B is a smaller width, closer to C is a larger width. Some machines won't even have this ability, Instead, they will just give you a couple of stitches for a zigzag. A small size, a medium size, and a larger size. In which case, try them all and have a sample of all of them so that you know when you would use them. Now I'm beginning with my needle in the fabric, press the foot down, holding onto the threads. And I'm going to start sewing. Now, as you can see with the zigzag, the needle is moving from the left to the right, which is why we needed to make sure we had a presser foot on the sewing machine that was going to be able to allow this and wasn't just a single hole. You can sew this as slowly or as quickly as you like, and you should be able to see the zigzag shape that's coming at the back of the sewing machine now. Now this is very much a sort of standard zigzag. We've got an average width and an average length, but what happens if we change that? And this is really what I want you to play around with here, is get to know your machine and have a play with changing the width and changing the length. What happens if I increase my width? So we now go to about five and perhaps we go to three, three and a half on the length, we'll have a much bigger, much wider zigzag. Now let's do the opposite. Let's go to a much smaller stitch. I'm going to take my stitch to one in the length and two millimeters in the width. And you'll see that you start to see a much smaller stitch coming through here. As with all of your general sewing, you're going to be guiding your fabric, you're not pushing, you're not pulling, and you may be following a marking on your stitch plate here. 
and there you can see the much narrower zigzag. Now really, I want you to go and have a play. Change the width, change the length, and see what you can create with your zigzag. Let me share times when I use a zigzag stitch, the width and length that I've used, and why I have used it. The other thing to note is that you can backstitch at the start and at the end when you do a zigzag. I would do this if my zigzag is securing my seam. If perhaps you're using the zigzag for decorative purposes, then you might not want to backstitch because it can look a little bit ugly. Let's take a quick look at these zigzag stitches. Now, this stitch here would be useful at finishing the edge of fabric. You can see that I've done a straight stitch because that's what a seam would look like. You'll have stitched your seam and then you'll do this to help finish the edge. I have a tutorial that shows you exactly how I've done this. This stitch is a width of two and a length of one on my machine. You can also try and do what's no, also known as a satin stitch. This is when you reduce the length, so the stitches are really close together in length. I did probably about 0.5, if not a little bit less, and the width here for mine was two millimeters. With the length for this stitch, you do need to be cautious that the fabric is still moving through the sewing machine. So you've got to find the right point where the fabric is moving through the machine, but the stitch is as close together as possible. This is great for applique, decoration, and you can use it as a form of a bar tack to secure areas. The next stitch, this is what I refer to as my sort of wonky straight stitch, and this can be useful for sewing knits and jersey together. This stitch has a width of about 0.5 millimeters and a length of about 2 to 2.5 millimeters. And you can use it to sew jersey or knit fabrics together because it will still allow the fabric to have a bit of stretch. Finally, you've got a very standard zigzag here. This zigzag has a width of 3 millimeters and a length of 2 millimeters. Obviously, you can have a play increasing and decreasing this, and this would be great for applique but it might also be useful in lingerie. Let me show you some zigzags on a bra that I've made. Now on this bra, hopefully you'll be able to see a variety of different widths of zigzag. This zigzag here is used to attach the strap onto the back of the bra. There's a slightly different width and length of zigzag as I've attached the elastic around the arm. There are two rows here, which is why you can see two rows. Hopefully you can also see that I've used it to attach clear elastic around the top of the cup. Zigzags are really useful at attaching elastic and sewing stretch because they allow the elastic or fabric to have a bit of stretch and then return. Another example is this really tiny zigzag that you can see on the back here where I've attached the hook and eyes. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of inspiration about where and how you can use a zigzag stitch. I really hope that you've learned how to use a zigzag and you've looked at the variety of uses that the zigzag stitch can have. Thanks for watching and see you soon.